It's the Zach Sang Show. We got Heather, we got Hi. Dan, and we welcome Drake Bell. Woo, hey. Take your shirt off. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what, this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> the, the last time you came on the show, we were just talking about it, what, six years ago? Pro- no, more, no than more than that. more than that. Maybe seven or eight. It was probably 2007, 2008. Wow. Yeah. It's been a very long time. Crazy, that was back in New York. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was a weird time for us. Heather was on the show at that time. Yeah, I remember we got cupcakes that day. I like cupcakes. I think it was. Chloe, you came on Shelly's birthday, and it was Chloe Kardashian's birthday on the exact same day. That's correct. And you had very great socks on. I think they were stripes, uh, and I want to say they were pink and like a navy blue. Oh, probably. Yeah. Jeez, what a memory. So now it's all wow. coming back to goodness. Me. Wow. Wow. Yeah, me and Chloe have the same birthday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You Look guys have that. a lot in common, I think. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> I had three birthdays in one day in, the, in that in that room, and that was a very good day. Thanks wow, for coming awesome. back, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Thanks for having me. And around that time, you um, your al- your album at the time was It's Only Time, mm-hmm. which you're arguably your biggest album you've done, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah. And easily my favorite of yours. Thanks, man. It's really good. That's cool. I remember watching your show and, and going to see you in the city, and you had like a, you had a brass section with you. Oh, did you? Oh, you saw us at, uh, yeah, that was a great show at, at the, um, it was down, like, uh, it was by I a can't remember, place. regardless. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yes. the Gramercy, that's exactly, that's where it was. Yeah, that was a fun show. Yeah, it had the whole horn section and everything. We had a big band at that time. It was, uh, I think there were nine, nine people, nine piece band. Nice. At that, time. that, I mean, that's huge. It's awesome. I mean, the yeah. best thing, it's, it's just really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I could, if I could, I'd travel with a 28 piece orchestra, you know, but everywhere you go, everywhere I go, they'd be here, you know? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that's the cool, the coolest thing is getting on stage and playing with as many musicians as possible. Cause you can just do everything that you want to do, you know? Um, but uh, but now it's now it's like you know much more stripped down. The last yeah. tour I did was just a three piece rockabilly thing, which was really fun. You you've had really like different stages of your music career that are really unique and like I mean they're kind of they're each individual. Yeah, you can't settle on anything. No, <laughs> so so like we let's go back to the start, right? You, you start really with you you do you do music before Drake and Josh, but yeah. I found a way. Mm-hmm. Is I, I thought that song could have been a hit. I know every oh, lyric thanks. still today. Well, that's what's so funny is it. You know, it was never a radio hit, but everywhere that we go, everywhere around the world, the biggest song. The second that we start those three chords, <laughs> the entire audience erupts and sings the song. And I look at my band. I'm like, you know what? That we we had a number one. We had we had a hit song. That's that's you know that's the equivalent. It's as close. You know, but it's the truth. I it's, mean, it's unreal. I mean, it really is like having a hit song because everywhere we go. Everyone knows the lyrics. Everyone knows the song. Everyone, it's it's insane. Wait, but there were all ages, all demographics, all ethnicities. Every, it doesn't matter. It's just like it it blows my mind. The song is obviously great, but it also says something for what Drake and Josh was and the role that that show played in so many people's lives. Totally, totally. That's the thing. That that that's another thing that that trips me out is going um going out in, in into the world and. and there's no. It could be a six year old, yeah, who wasn't even alive when the show was on, mm-hmm. or it could be a sixty year old who's going, oh man, it's the only show I could sit down and watch with my kids or my grandkids, and and we, you know, I would watch it when they weren't even home, and <laughs> it, they were just. It, it was so cool to not have, you know, we even though we were on Nickelodeon, yeah. which is a. I don't know what, not 12 to 16 or something like that, whatever the demographic is there. 10. But there isn't, there wasn't for Drake and Josh, which was so cool. No. You know, everybody, it, it was really just a universal show, which is really cool. But what was it? You know, like when, when do you watch, like, have you watched recently any episodes? Like, do, would you okay, go so back I'm, if you're on Team I'm Nick? probably the total opposite of Josh. Like, if you ask Josh <laughs> this question, he would say, oh, I haven't watched Drake and Josh in 10 years. I'd never even watched it when it's on. I watch it all the time. <laughs> what? I watch it all the time. I love it. It's like going back and in, in, in looking at your high school yearbook. and Because you can watch each episode yeah. and you can think about the table read from that moment. Absolutely. The notes Dan was giving you totally. from Video Village. Exactly. You, you know everything that Every made single up the scene. Little, little minute detail of, yeah. of, of the scene. And it's like going back and looking at your memories, you know? And it was a great time working on that show. It was some of the best times of my life. So, <clears throat> And also... The show's pretty funny. So I like, you know, I like watching it sometimes when I'm just hanging out at home and I'm got nothing to do and I'm scrolling through Netflix. I'm like, you know, it's on my recently watched. I'm like, oh, oh, I haven't seen that episode in a while. I'll watch it. I don't know if I watch it through its entirety, but. Are you giving yourself notes when you're watching it or are you just. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I'm usually just going, wow, you're really funny. You did that really, really well. <laughs> like you couldn't, you couldn't have done that any better. It's usually what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, it's no. You definitely watch the show and go, oh my god, wait, uh, what? Why did you? What? Oh, you, uh, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you you could be, you could watch and you'd be like, you know, this was the best I could have done. It you was, know what's be, really cool? It really is, was great. What, what, what I love going back and watching it for really is seeing Josh and I together. Is I that was uh. his, his our partnership. Is is something, especially if you're, you know, being an actor and an entertainer in this business, it, having some, having chemistry like that with somebody is is so unattainable. It's so, I mean, and we we worked together last year on on Grandfathered. We hadn't been together for ten years, wow. and Josh was right after the 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 scene, and and I mean, we got right into it. We we're boom, yeah. boom, 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 making stuff up, ad libbing, all this stuff, ad, stuff that actually made the 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 the, sh the episode. And uh, he came up to me and said, man, I thought after 10 years it was going to be, uh, what's it going to be like getting back? And man, we fell right back into it, you know? So it's cool to go back and watch, you know, just our our chemistry together because I was a huge fan of Martin and Lewis, Abbott and Costello, yeah. uh, all these buddy comedy teams growing up that to be able to be a Dean Martin to somebody's Jerry Lewis was like a dream come true. No, so that's I, that, I love just going back and watching us our, our certain scenes of ours together where we're really just on fire. You know, it's you, really fun to watch. You guys were really best friends, absolutely. And the Amanda Show really brought the two of you together in a big way and kind of solidified that friendship. Totally. I mean, when we when we were on the Amanda Show, we would go. It's so funny because we would go to <clears throat> his house, or I'd go and spend the night at his house, and we would stay up all night writing our show you know we even though we were on Amanda show we don't oh, know we're gonna we're gonna have our own show one day we're gonna do our own thing and and you know because I was so I already at that age I was so into that Dean Martin Jerry Lewis yeah. thing that I was I I just knew oh we're gonna be a buddy team I, I'm gonna be Dan Aykroyd you're gonna be John Belushi I'm gonna be Gene Wilder you're gonna be Richard Pryor <laughs> and here's what it is and we would stay up all night and go uh maybe we live in an apartment and you live across the hall from me and you're, you know, I'm a guitar player and you, you become my manager. And we re really like thought this out yeah. before any, this was, you know, season one or two of Amanda show before any thought of Drake and Josh came on. Wow. And we were thinking, oh, but you can only book me shows at, you know, the, the five-year-old's party. <laughs> yeah. and you're trying to say, oh, we got you a great gig. And then I show up and a kid's picking his nose. I'm like, what is this, Josh? <laughs> You know, and we would just sit up and 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 do that and 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 uh, ever all the time, and then to be able to actually make that a reality, you know, we would sometimes look at each other on set and go, "Man, how did this even happen?" <laughs> it's a total trip. Did you bring that idea to Dan, or did Dan come no, to you? No, that's what's so funny is we would just do that. That that's that was, what's that's what's just so yeah. serendipitous about it all is we would do that in our bedroom. And then just go to set and not even talk about it or say anything. That was our fantasy, and our, that was wow. you know some kids play it's manifestation, some, some bro. Kid, yeah, some kids play cowboys and Indians. We were playing you know Desi Arnaz and <laughs> yeah. you know I was like you know uh, Michael you know uh, uh, mogul. You know yeah. we were playing like executive. We were playing Dan Schneider. Yeah, <laughs> and so, uh, so but we wouldn't tell him. But we were doing a sketch where Josh and I. All it said in the script was Drake and Josh fight over a shrimp. <laughs> and, I mean, come on. And that's all it said. And we walk up. We walk up. We see a shrimp on the on the ground, and I'm like, "Oh, shrimp! Awesome!" And I pick it up to eat it. And then Josh's like, "But I want it. I want it." You know. And then we just have to fight and just do whatever <laughs> comes naturally to us, you know. And uh, so while we were doing that, one of the writers on the show, Steve Malaro, who's actually the showrunner for uh, Big Bang Theory now, yeah, uh, leaned over to Dan Schneider and said, "You know, this is your next show." He said, these two guys, this is your next show. And then that became Drake and Josh. And what was so cool for us is the the very last episode and the very last scene that we shot of Drake and Josh, the series, was Which, us fighting over a shrimp. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it was a little recall yeah. of like where it all where it all started. And, and that's one of the I mean, that's one of the most iconic scenes, right? Obviously from the Amanda yeah, show, but yeah. obviously in your life. Does it, I, it obviously hurts you that there's not a relationship. Like you once had with John. Listen, man, uh, there is, but there is. I mean, he's he's a totally rad dude, and we've we've been. Listen, it's brotherly love, man. It's sibling rivalry. We've been through the. We've been through everything. We've been through, you know, 
hey, uh, what are you doing after work? Um, after we've spent 18 hours together. Yeah. And, uh, nothing. Well, and then we'd go home and hang out and order some pizza and watch movies and play video games. After we and I would end up crashing at his house and going to work with him the next morning. It was literally family. It was family, yeah, and so we'd be. Totally but then it. we would be in moments where, you know, if I saw him on set, I'm like, I'm only, I'm only speaking dialogue to him. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't want to talk to. But it's brotherly stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? So, it's just, you know, with the whole wedding thing, that was just like, uh, I, I saw. We've been talking. We've, been, we've. The thing that 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 sur- surprised me was because we are friendly. And we talk all the time, and and it just sort of caught me off guard when I saw it on social media. I'm like. You didn't even tell me when, where, how, what. I we we talked yesterday. That's not. And you didn't even tell me that it was in Malibu. I could have. I I you, lived I, forty it, minutes away. Yeah, you weren't in Hawaii. You know, <laughs> but but uh, but you know what? Whatever it is, what it is. But uh, I love the kid, and he's one of the most talented guys. Like I said, you yeah. Know, I go back to reminisce on on watching what we've done together. You know. I mean, I, I, you probably get the question all the time, right? And I sh- I know that the world would want it, right? A Drake and Josh movie, a Drake and Josh reunion, anything like that, or even like a next generation Drake and Josh. You know, what does that look like today? Um, I don't know what it would look like, but I would be absolutely into. It. I'd like, you know, I I I would be, I would work. With Josh, I, I when I see m- me and Josh's relationship or career, or whatever it is, our uh, you know our our artistic relationship, I guess. Mm-hmm. I look at Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau and Grumpy Old Men and and in in the Odd Couple and and see them. You know, I see us working together when we're sixty five years old. You know, and still still bringing it. Because, like I said, I'm not going to be able to go and find that with anybody else. It's no, not, you know, it's a once in a lifetime. Thing. There are there are actors that I've made. Television shows with movies with uh, multiple television shows. There's an actor I did. I just did a eight episodes of a television show. I did a pilot with him. I've made a movie with him. Spent mm-hmm. months with. We still don't have the chemistry that Josh and I have. Yeah. You know, and I've done multiple projects with these guys. And yeah, we have great chemistry. We're funny together. But it'll never be what Josh and I have. No. You know. So. Um, so I would always be. You know, I'm the John Lennon in this situation. You know, if 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 the Beatles want to get back together. If if it's in our schedules and everybody can make the time for it and we we're all not busy, you're down. I'm I'd do it. I'd do it tomorrow. Nice, cool, yeah, totally. I, I think the world would want it. Check out YouTube. Check it. out Where's Walter. I've I know. I love it. I love just a new episode because yeah. we've kind of given a little answer to why uh, Drake and Josh got canceled. I'm digging honestly. Like I, I love the YouTube channel. Maybe mm-hmm. Avengers was a really great sketch. Oh, thanks, man. Thank really you. funny. Yeah, that that we just slapped that together. Grab like my nephew and some of his <laughs> friends. That was a day. Don't ever work so, with children or animals. W C <laughs> Fields was right. That little green kid was hilarious. Right? Wasn't that so? Oh, I felt so bad. We had to paint that little kid. He was green all day. We didn't use him till the end of the day. It was so funny. So, I mean, you're doing this all on your own, right? Like, mm-hmm. th- this whole YouTube game. Are you funding it on your own? It- I'm doing everything on my own. I just made my record on my own. I Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm doing doing it all solo, man. Just, that- just doing my thing. There, I mean, I, there's risk in that, but the reward is also great. And Yeah, I mean, I just, I, my, my idols are, like I said, Jerry Lewis, who yeah. wrote, directed, produced, starred. Uh, Charlie Chaplin scored his films. Yeah. He wrote his films. He produced his films. He directed his films. <clears throat> Walt Disney. You know, these are the the people that I that I at, at eighty years old when I'm you know sitting in my house, I want to be able to look back at my career and go, okay, you know, I created this. T- I didn't just star in these things that other people created. I didn't just search around my whole life trying to get the next role or you know waiting for this, waiting for that. I was able to sit there and create something from nothing, and that's the most fun for me. It's why I became a musician is to be able to sit there and have nothing, have a silent room, and then all of a sudden be able to just pump out, you know, turn it into something. Turn it into something. Yeah, yeah, that's the most rewarding thing. And so with the YouTube stuff and with the the record, and there's just so many obstacles. And and coming from a, it's really exciting for me because I came from doing this when there was no YouTube, there was no Instagram, there was no Twitter, there was no direct access to your fans. It was I, a different world, completely were, different world. Yeah. So you know. When Josh and I were on on Nickelodeon, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have Twitter, we couldn't we couldn't send something directly to our fans and say, "Hey guys, what's up? What do you think of this? What is that?" So now, I I I was I was going to make the record and going to uh, I was writing some stuff and trying to pitch it to to networks and going get it made, and I'm and I'm sitting back going, "Man, I'm it's it's the it's the horse in the automobile all over again. I'm <laughs> I'm 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 in the old school. I feel like I'm." 
I'm I'm a silent picture guy trying to go around going, look at my silent picture. You want to buy my silent picture? And the guys are like, dude, we have talkies now. Like you can just go on. You can just go make it yourself. You can just go and. And you know you don't have to get a label to release your record. You don't have to get a yeah. this. You know, no, you, you do can, it on your own. You can go f- build a fan base on YouTube. Go build a fan base through one of your social media platforms, and then go record your record, and then go release it yourself through TuneCore, and then go put together your own tour. And so I'm sitting here going, why am I paying people to no, do this? You can do it yeah, on your right? own. Why can't I? Sense. As long as you get up early enough and you you know you you stay clear headed. Well, I was just gonna say you yeah. don't go crazy. Uh, yeah, exactly. But, you it, when you didn't, so not having Twitter and social media when you were you know obviously doing the shows. Do you think? that hurt or helped you um well i mean i think it i don't know if it hurt but i mean i josh and i would have 20 billion followers if we had instagram yeah. and <laughs> twitter when drake and josh was on i'll tell you that but <laughs> um i don't know i i think it's just a new a new thing I, I don't know if it hurt or helped or how it uh yeah i i don't know it's it's interesting it's sort of it's like, I don't know, if, would you ask Charlie Chaplin if, if not having talkies hurt or helped his career? I don't know, he's still a le- I mean, no, he's, he's still, still a legend. Charlie Chaplin. No, you're 100% you know, right. I think we use what we had, you know, you yeah. use what you have at the time and yeah. what you have. It's just really exciting now what what ability the, a, a kid in his bedroom can do now, you Is know? It, I mean, look at Shawn Mendes, for example, perfect example. He's a you superstar. Know? All he's a superstar and he, and he just is a kid in his bedroom and, you know, had and was able to show this talent that otherwise would have just been... You know, sequestered into his in his bedroom, and his mom's friends, you know, applauding him at the dinner table after you know. <laughs> that, that's but it all also says something different for the uh, children's TV and Nickelodeon television play a much different role in the lives of kids today than it did when Drake and Josh was on. Even when iCarly and Victorious was on, absolutely, right? children react to television differently and they give into it differently. I, I you know, uh, honestly, like Victorious and iCarly were these iconic legendary shows as is Drake and Josh mm-hmm. and the Amanda show you know I don't know I don't know maybe that doesn't exist anymore I have I have no idea you know only time will tell it's interesting I I think we're I was I was working on a, a show recently and and I was looking at it and I was thinking to myself if, if I was here working on this show five years ago six years ago or it wouldn't it would be the jokes would be a little older. Mm-hmm. The it wouldn't be skewing so young. And I was thinking to myself, why? Why is it so young? Why this would be this should be a teenage show? You know, kids that right before they're driving should be watching this. That's show. That's what drinking Josh. And then was. I exactly. And then I go, oh, because those kids are watching YouTube. Yeah. But then I go to YouTube and I look at the 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 entertainment that they're getting, and the entertainment that they're getting on YouTube is, hey, man, so I'm here at my friend's house, and, like, I totally, like, bought this, like, stuff, and we're going to put it all over our faces, and then he's going to, like, lick it off, and it's going to be crazy, dude. Like, oh, my God. And then we're going to jump back, flips on the trampoline into our pool. Whoa. And that gets t- and 10 that million gets views. And that gets 10 million yeah. views. But I think that there were, I think that there's some somebody or someone out there that needs to harness that and bring what you're talking about what it meant to grow up on a show and to love these characters yeah. and to get, you know, it's, it's something, you know, it's, it's full, like what full house is to people, I, you know, exactly. someone needs to bring that to YouTube or bring that to the, to the internet world. Dan Schneider could be the guy. He could, but he's a little busy right now. He's, he's doing like 17 shows on Nickelodeon. So. I know. <laughs> Do you ever uh, talk to Amanda Bynes anymore? I haven't talked to Amanda in years. I, uh, I talked to her a little bit when she was going through her, her, her thing, but... I haven't, uh, no, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, she, she hasn't, she's kind of keeping away from everybody. What do you remember when you hear her name? What do I remember? Yeah, like, what, where, where does your mind go when you hear Amanda Bynes? I mean, Carol Burnett, you know, I mean, unbelievable talent and funny as hell and, uh, way beyond her years and, like, lightning in a bottle. I mean, the girl, when we started working together, she's, we, what we were 13 12 13 years old and the girl was running circles around the adult. I mean we had adults in the cast who could do every voice and every this and they were veterans and they oh they've been on this and that and they've done this show in Broadway and blah 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 blah. and here's this 12 13 year old girl just going <laughs> just running circles around him, changing costumes changing faces doing voices doing characters doing this doing that and keeping the energy up and you know it's it was I mean she's she's unbelievable unbelievable talent I, I'm watching the Amanda show in my head yeah. while you're describing that. What did you learn from her? Um, what, like, what did you take away, good or bad? You know, honestly, going and starting working with Amanda, it was 
I had, I had already been a fan of hers on from all that. Yeah. And so going to work with her, it was like, wow, I'm, I, I get to work. She was a star to me. She was, she was for me as if somebody was going to get to go work on Seinfeld, you know, Oh, I get to work with Jerry Seinfeld working with Amanda Bynes. was like, wow, I get to work with Amanda. And you know, what to learn from her would be just uh, a work ethic. You know, I mean, she worked her tail end off and there were very, I mean, I could, you know, I could count on one hand the times that I saw her out of, you know, four or five years of working together that, and, and I'm talking stressful situations of yeah. long nights, long, long hours, m heavy makeup, uh, you know, and, and working under the, the stress of um, a perfectionist like Dan Schneider who will do 57 takes of something to get it right, which is, you know, sometimes you got to do it. And that's, you know, I don't fault him. I mean, he's a Dude, he gets he's the genius. best product. Exactly. I know. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I can count on one hand the times that I've seen her break or go or, 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 or fall or go, okay, I've had enough, I've had enough. And when she does, it's, you know, you surprise, you're surprised it didn't happen, you know, seven hours prior. And that's just, she could just take anything. But do she, you think taking those blows is kind of what ultimately led to what the world Honestly, witnessed? Honestly, I don't know what led to that. I think that might just be something that is that was there, that was dormant, laying, yeah. lying dormant, and in in and something just happened. You know, they say that with uh, with th with uh, with issues like that, they don't they start to show up in in your twenties and things mm -hmm. like that. But I don't. I mean, we we. I don't think that that had anything to do with it. I think that that's a separate, a separate thing, and that's what makes it so tragic. Is because I don't, I don't think that it was what I don't think it, you know Hollywood or or her, or her craft had anything to do with with that. And it was going to happen either. It was going to happen either way. If she was at school yeah. for 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 fashion, it would have happened there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the tragedy is that she was she had this unbelievable talent and she was just, I mean, she was a force and that was just taken from her, you know, out of nowhere, out of just no, you know, no, uh, warning, yeah. no warning or anything. It was just like, okay, here, this is going to be your life now. Check this out. Look, how do I deal with this? How do I, what, a, you know, and for someone to have the pressures of Hollywood and have all of that going on, and then this happened. It, yeah. That I that think that didn't help. No, all, I don't. You know? th I think it was more of the yeah. other interfering with her life in Hollywood than her life in Hollywood causing causing it. it it's know? it's hard to live a leave a major show, right? Like not going to set every day to do a show like Drake and Josh, even beyond the show not airing. That, it's that, it's it's definitely a trip, man. It's anytime you're anytime that you are on any project for a long period of time where you make a family with people. I mean, dude, your life was Nick on Sunset. That's what I'm saying. I mean, anytime, I mean, we, even with Amanda's show before that, yeah. I spent, you know, 10 years, 11 years at Nick on Sunset. Um, and so, but, but anything that you do, if you go on tour for five months with a, with a band and with a crew, you know, the second you get home, it, I mean, you were eating lunch every day with these guys. You were going, yeah, you were, shit. after shows, you were, you know, days off, you go going to the movies, going to the mall, going to hang out days off, you know, you create a family. You're mm -hmm. you're shooting a movie for four and a half months, five months in in some location that you're not from. So everyone, you know, groups together and becomes friends yeah. at the hotel and all splits off with each other. And and then all of a sudden, you don't ever see those people again. And you know that's why that's why when we do a show like Drake and Josh, we're all we are all like a family. I mean, I can call anybody up from Drake and Josh right now on my phone and go have lunch with them right now. Yeah. If, if any, if I needed anything from anybody from that show, all I'd have to do is pick up the phone and vice versa. If anybody needed anything from me, from Dan, from Josh, from anybody, that's the thing is like, I, you know, yeah. Okay. Whatever. So the press blew, blew a little bit of Josh and my thing out of proportion than what it really is. But if I called Josh right now and I said, Hey man, what's going on? He'd be like, what's up? And I'd go see him. I mean, there's no, it's, we are yeah. going to be a family for the rest of our lives. But there is a, sh I mean, there is a personal shift too, right? Like when, you're not having a show airing all the time. I mean, there's, there, it, yeah, it, it's I like mean, a shock to the system. I, yeah. I, I guess if you, if it, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. It definitely is a, you know. A shock if you if you bask in the limelight of it, I guess. Yeah. You know, if you if you go, oh, you know, I I've got the. If you look at it as, um, a job, a really a really cool job that you get to do, and you get to do what you love. You know, if 
it, it, then when it ends, I think you're more focused on, okay, how do I continue doing what I love to do instead yeah. of where'd all my stardom and fans, oh, where I, where my makeup people and my assistants <laughs> and my, my dressing well, rooms go. You also got to figure out what, you, what your next move what is. Exactly. I think, you know, if you just stay focused in your craft and you love what you're doing, you know, that's, I mean, I have, I'm obsessive with it. You know, yeah. people ask me, what do you, what do you do when you're not playing guitar or acting or whatever? I go, I, I'm sleeping. You know, really, I mean, I'm, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm doing nothing all the, everything I do every single day at all times is to further what I'm doing artistically. Yeah, I totally you know, understand I, that. I, I stop to do eat, that. I stop to eat and I go to the gym and that's about it. And everything else, even the but, gym though, that's, that's working to better myself, my mind, my craft, my yeah. everything, you know, so. So I want to, I want to roll, roll, run down a little, uh, a couple things. How do we feel about Justin Bieber right now? I mean, he's rad. I, look, are we cool with him? Uh, totally cool. I, I, I think that last record he put out was was amazing. Yeah. Have you got to talk to him since your little feud? We've run into each other a couple times. Yeah. What happens? He doesn't like to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> he just Weird. Kinda, he doesn't like to talk to me. He did. He did. He did. Uh, he did say you're looking real good with that James Dean hairdo one, one, wow. one time. Wow, there you go. And I was like, dude, James Dean. And I, you'll I was take like, it. I was like, James Dean, thanks, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, where are we at with Caitlyn Jenner? Are we are we still calling Caitlyn Bruce or no, where I mean, are we at? Come on, that was a bad, stupid joke. Come on, of course, <laughs> everything's fine. Everything's it happens, great. you know. We no, would actually get along, surprisingly. You did? No, I said we would actually get along. Okay. Surprisingly. Donald Trump, do we still support him? Still support? Where did that come from? I thought you were a Donald Trump supporter. That came out. I, I think people are just saying stuff online. <laughs> like they're trying to go to the cut for the jugular <laughs> because what was it? The oh, 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 it was the wedding stuff because that was coming out when the wedding stuff. I'm going through the Twitter feed and they're like, he didn't come because he's a Donald Trump supporter. And I think it probably because of the Caitlyn Jenner tweet. Well, didn't you tweet in support of Donald Trump at some point? And I think it was during the no, primaries. No, Never? No. no. Okay. I think you're thinking of Aaron Carter. <laughs> no, no, not me. No, I, I definitely. Don't. I, I want to see. I don't don't get political. Yourself, but... No, I don't get. No, but he de he he was the one that came out and supported Trump. But no, I I I mean, I don't get political. Honestly, I just want to make you make you laugh, make you sing a song, and all that kind of stuff. So I try and stay out of the politics. The Caitlyn Jenner tweet but was you, the you was like the, was the closest that I got, and that was a bad. That was just like. But you like the resurgence a little bit. Come on, you know what? everything. Like you said before, everything is in you know promotion of your art and your craft. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And when those moments happen. Yeah. And honestly, the Caitlyn Jenner thing, when I, I woke up in the morning, this is the truth about it. I woke up in the morning and someone showed me the picture and I thought it was a photoshopped picture. I thought it was a, I thought someone put out a fake meme. And then all of a sudden I'm front page news. Like, I thought it was fake. I didn't even know. I'm like, I woke up Monday morning and this was, I'm like, that's not how I think. I'm sorry. I thought someone was making a joke. Um, but uh, it, you I believe there's something along the lines of, my, of I'll, I'll call you Bruce or yeah, it, I'll always like, call I'm you like, Bruce. It didn't, it didn't uh, reflect like my, my thoughts or views on the situation <laughs> at all. I was reacting to what I thought was just a meme. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's it, it came out then, and and, and I'm, they're like, oh, we didn't invite him to the to the uh, yeah. wedding because he's a Trump supporter, and he because of the he's, Trans he's transphobe and all so. this. Stuff. It's ridiculous. I've guys, I've lived in Hollywood for 30, 31 <laughs> years, and I've worked in this town for thirty one years. I don't think I can be phobic of anything. Uh, <laughs> honest as EP. Do you ever wish you could release music under the name Just Drake? Like, do you wish Drake wasn't Drake so you could be Drake? <laughs> Just Drake. You'll always be Drake um, Bell. You will always be first name, last yeah. name, Drake yeah, Bell. Yeah, you know, I, it's really, I, it's funny. I, I don't know, man. I think, I mean, he's a cool dude, and I like his music, so I, I, I mean, I, it's kind of weird, yeah. It's kind of kind of a bummer. I'm like the Elvis Costello, and he's Elvis now, well, I guess. Well, yeah, because that's not even his real name. That's Well, yeah, you know, yeah. that's the other thing, too. Poser. But Dr Drake is but your middle name. I was just going to say, the thing that we do have going for us is it's both of our middle names. Why didn't you his go with Jared? Aubrey Drake Graham, and mine's Jared, Jared Drake Bell. Why didn't you go with Jared? I just went by Drake my whole life as a kid. My my mom named me wanted to name me Jared. My dad wanted to name me Drake. My mom won, but when Who I went really in... really won? But my dad really won, <laughs> yeah. so... On um, birth certificate, it's Jared, but all growing up... It's Drake. Drake, 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 Drake. Well, At school, it was Drake, so when I started acting, it was just Drake. Drake is more unique, man. What are the chances the world's most famous actor is all... I mean, m Music, rapper right? is I named mean, Drake, yeah, too. Yeah, I do have a shirt. Where I, I, played a, I played a show on, uh, on the CW uh, a couple of years ago, and I was, I was at the mall in Mississippi, and they had this uh, spray-painting shirt 
where they spray paint like the the shirts. The oh t-shirts. yeah, they had I got a big them. neon one that said "Not the Rapper" oh, that's <laughs> on it, and so nice. when I was playing on the like national TV, just big on these screens, it was like "Not the Rapper." <laughs> on, cause, on, actually, speaking of shirts, I saw a shirt you were wearing online like a year or two ago. It says "Sorry, I'm not a musician." Oh yeah, what was that about? That's <laughs> just a funny shirt I, I picked up. I thought <laughs> so, people, so, so no one would ask me any, you know. What's how do you play a C major seven diminished nine? Oh, I didn't know if do you were trying to send like. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just making a joke. Yeah, I didn't know if you were trying to send like a message with that shirt or something. No, no, no. It's just a funny shirt. He is a musician. Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. That's why I didn't get I the shirt. I just wear it on. It's just funny to wear like on stage when you're playing a concert. You know, it's like, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm not a musician. You know, mistakes are free of charge. So <laughs> if you make any mistakes on stage, you know, you have a billboard announcing why. <laughs> Where were you at, like in life, when you were doing the show Splash? I feel like you were in a very tense position. When I, mean, I did Splash, where was I? Oh, uh, I mean that was the you know the, the, the diving show. Mm-hmm. He literally would dive like like professional diving, and dude, it was painful. I would I, not painful to watch, but like physically oh, painful. It is painful. I still do it. I still dive. I mean, I'm I love it. Well, you I, didn't dive I'm, before Splash, not right? before Splash, no. no. But I fell in love with it, and uh, no, it, what what happened was is they uh, you know you get these random phone calls of oh hey there's this show or they're doing this or they're doing that. And they all, they're all, they all just sound so, okay, no, I'm not doing that, no, I'm not yeah. doing that. But they called and said, hey, do you want to do this diving show with Greg Luganis? <laughs> and I was like, hang it. I was like, a diving show, jump into a swimming pool a couple times. I'm like, I probably won't even make it through all the episodes. And I get to hang out with Greg Luganis, who's an Olympic but, diver. I'm, I love and you diving. Get paid. And I get to try it, which is really cool. And you get paid. And I get paid, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. But so I go, uh. I'm thinking a little, little springboard diving, you know, maybe no. we'll get to a little, <laughs> and we Jeff. get there and we're looking at a 30, you know, a three story, 33 foot high dive. And they're telling us we're going to be doing things off of this. And I, I, I can't I, believe you did it. I'm I afraid of left. heights. First of all, that, it, I'm terrified of heights. I mean, I, 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 I re, just ridiculous fright, uh, afraid of heights. And, uh, so I get up there and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to jump off this thing, let alone do any somersault flip or anything acrobatic. And uh, well, you do. And I ended up being able to do arm stand summer. I, I fling myself off the thing now. It's insane. Yeah, worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Um, you know, I got hurt a couple times just because they push you way too. I mean, we were doing things by the fourth episode. That our trainers are going. Oh my God! They they want to kill you. Well, yeah, they, they did want it. The producers they, they go, move fast. Yeah, the, the 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 trainers were were saying, you know, this we don't we don't even attempt to do this until somebody's been diving for five six years. <laughs> we've been know? doing it for and, a week, and we've been <laughs> seriously we've been doing it for two weeks, wow. and they're going, okay, we're going to be doing a a front double two and a half, a front two and a half, and do, you know, no. a front two and a half. What? <laughs> That's two, and then and so I tried to do that, and then I slammed. I got a concussion, Ooh, bloody noses, and all this. And but America watched, brutal. and America watched, and it was fun. And, and um, but, the uh, most expensive bloody nose. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it, it, you know, I I got to uh, find a new passion, which was really cool. So now I get to go over to the Rose Bowl whenever they're diving and stuff. It, oh, you cool. dive. Yeah, yeah I was watching your Avengers video, and other than the little green baby, I noticed, and no, I don't know if anybody else pointed out, but I noticed like your package. <laughs> Wow! Thanks, dude. <laughs> I just I just thought more people would it's there. point it out. It's definitely there, and it was it was almost like distracting in a way. Because when he ran across, I was like, I know can, we can had to edit. S- we had to edit around it so bad. I could tell. I was looking. <laughs> for, was, I could tell. It's very. It's like very uh, short clips where it's full body. Yeah, we didn't. Very very few. Yeah, and only because we had to. <laughs> and uh, I, when we went back to to watch the the dailies on that, I I'm going, oh my god! And I'm just and I edited it. So oh no no, I didn't edit that one. My buddy did. But so we're sitting there, and I'm I'm going, okay, we have to wait and cut right there, okay, and r- okay, right when I stand up, cut there, and then right when I le- sit back down, <laughs> put bring it back right there. So yeah, it was. Uh, thanks for noticing, though. <laughs> no problem. I thought you stuffed it at first. And- no, no, no. Wow, it's, it's good for you. Your Listen, I gotta be honest. You know, he, I he said it was there wasn't many full body clips, and I was I was trying to pause it to see if. If there was an outline, you're or if invested it was a, in this. I did, or there was a sock, and I couldn't find that many <laughs> scenes where it was full body. That's where I was like, I That's think why, he's doing though. this on purpose. Yeah. Interesting. Would you ever stuff? You don't have this to. Went apparently. A whole, this went a whole different. Are we on Howard Stern? No. <laughs> you, you have you you were in a relationship, right? I was. I think so. I am. You are still yeah. okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ma- not married? No, not married. No. Got it. No. Did you ever date Miranda Cosgrove? 
bro, come on, dude. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that's, I gotta be that's like asking John it's, Stamos if he ever dated like Michelle. Yeah, man, I've also never seen Drake and Josh. I don't know. I'm no, asking no, questions. No, no, she's she's my she's my little sister, man. Oh. She's she's uh, um, uh, I mean, my memories of her are are. Uh, little seven-year-old Miranda looking up at me with her big eyes and, you know, where are we going now? I'm like, we're going to go find your mom because I'm <laughs> going to go over here. Uh, but she, um, yeah, she's like my, she's like my little sister. Oh, so. I didn't know if you guys were like Eskimo birds or something. You know? No, no, that'd be, that'd be, did you date Miranda? No, no, you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, th- there's dates at a certain oh, moment in history all right. where that it existed all right. for maybe a span of like a year. Well, I'm her big brother, so watch out. Well, we'll kick your I'm, ass with that new rip yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, no, you totally kick my ass. Yeah, yeah, You'd win. Right. No, she's, yeah, she's just like a little sister to me, man. She's, she's like how John Stamos is with uh, the Olsen twins. It's like same thing. I just remember every time I look at Miranda, you know, I hear people, oh man, she's getting so hot now and all this. I'm like, every time I look at her, I see a seven year old little girl. I just see my little sister. I see little Megan, you know, it's same with my nieces and nephews. Like my, my niece is 25 or 26 and She'll call, go, oh, Uncle Drake, you know, we're gonna, we're coming up to L.A., we want to hang out, um, is there anywhere cool to go? I'm like, oh, yeah, but you kind of got to be 21. Yeah, tw- She's like, I'm almost 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sorry, you're always going to be 12 to me. Yeah, like, right? you're always going to be my little my little girl, sorry. Honest is EP. Runaway, I like that song. Oh, thanks, man. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You wrote the whole EP? Yeah. Y- yeah. Not your first time writing things solo. Y- your first album, you wrote three songs solo just by yourself. Well, I mean, I write a lot of songs on my own. I write a lot of, I do a lot of collaboration. Um, so I write a lot of songs with uh, other people. My my first record, I my first and second record, I did a lot of collaboration with a guy called uh, Backhouse Mike, Michael Corcoran, who does a lot of the music for, oh, you know Michael. Of yeah, course. Of course. So you've been to Mike's house, yeah. King. So he, he, yeah, he, he, he and did, I, I found a way with you. Yeah, that's that's where it all that's where it all started. I went to. Well, you were in a band too, right? Yeah, we played together way before uh, Drake and Josh. And yeah. When when Drake and Josh came around, I went to Mike and I said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna write a theme song for this show, and uh, I'm gonna pitch it, and it's gonna you know we're gonna do it." <laughs> and then I had to go and convince Dan to uh, to do it. And um, but yeah, so and then and then it <laughs> snowballed into him. Well, it changes event. Michael Corcoran's life. Oh, it completely changed. I mean, his are you life. kidding? Yeah, I mean, now he's <laughs> able to do all the. Dan's shows and he does all the music for all of that. He just did the Trolls movie. He did oh, now, cool. now he scores. Now he now he scores everything. It's, Ooh, it's, a lot of money. it's amazing. Yeah. Literally oh, everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, rich man. That's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love him. Yeah, <laughs> he's a good person. I should have taken an agency commission on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you you literally pitched Dan yourself on that that theme song. Oh yeah yeah. How nervous were you? It was really fun. So it, this is a it was a Friday. And he calls me and he says, hey, Drake, I want to know, I want to have a meeting with you on Monday to find out how much or how little we want to use. Because he's always been a fan of my music. He's yeah. always been a real, it's always been a great supporter of my, of my music. Because we grew, we had the same Beatles, Beach Boys, yeah. we had the same back, uh, musical background. And so I said, he said, I want to ask how much or how little you want to use your music. Do you want him to be a guitar player? Do you want to keep that separate from the show? Do you want to, so we're going to discuss that Monday. I said, great, see you Monday. What a cool conversation to have. Right? Because usually that stuff is dictated for you and exactly. you have no say. That's what's so cool about Dan, That's, man. You know, he, a lot of people say stuff about him, but it, no. he's he's a genius. Beyond genius, he knows how to respect artists and uh-huh. he knows how to collaborate and yep. he's such a good person and yep. he, he inspires you to be your best 100%. every time you're around him. 100%. I, 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 and that's, that's what I, I like that you say that because I think a lot of people get stressed around, out around no. him, and I go, if you just if you just listen to him, you know, a friend of mine was talking. Uh, he was working with Steve Wynn, and he was building the fountains at the Bellagio. And he, uh, Steve, calls him and says, uh, you know, this, this, it's, I can't believe. I wish I'd never met you. You're the worst. This, they said that if if wind blows, they're they're going to show part of the fountain, and it's going to be a disaster. No, 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 f this, blah, 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 screaming at him, right? And then he, when Steve goes to him the next day, and uh, my friend goes, can we talk about that conversation we had yesterday? And he leans over, gives him a big bear hug, and he goes, I'm sorry I wasn't yelling at you. I was just upset that a project that we're working on together would be anything less than perfection. And he goes, that's what, I was, that's, where I, that's what I was taking it out on. I apologize, but I just want you to know that I, with our, when we're together, I strive for perfection, and when it doesn't, and when it doesn't come out perfect... It's not you. I, it's not you. It's, that's what I'm getting upset at. And that's the same thing with Dan, is, is 
if you just know that he's just trying to get the best possible performance out of you and you go with it, then that's all that you're going to get. And you know? he knows. Exactly. He, he knows, knows when you're at your best. He, exactly. 100%. Yeah. I, so anyway, uh, I I, we digress. Um, so I called uh, Michael and I said, hey, Michael, we're having this meeting. He wants to discuss how much or how little we're going to use the music. I want to write a theme song. We're, we're going to pitch a theme song. And he goes, oh, okay. So I go to his house on Saturday and we're sitting there, days go by, you know, doing all the uh, uh, yeah. 80s theme songs, all the theme <laughs> songs that we grew up on and we love and we know and nothing's coming out. It's like an eight hour day and nothing's coming out. And so finally I go, forget a theme song. Let's just write a song. Let's not waste the day. Let's just at least write a song today. So we sit there, we're starting to write this tune and I go, hey man, this is a really cool song, yeah. great melody. I think the theme song thing was throwing us. We were trying to sound like a theme song. No, and you, I go now that we've got this melody and we've got this this chord progression. Let's make the lyrics go towards this the the theme of the show. Of mm -hmm. like, hey, here's these two brothers or these two these two guys. They come together. They 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 they're complete opposites, but then they find each other. You know, so it's I never thought it'd be so simple. Yeah. But I found a way. You know, we found a way to make it work. And I'll always, you know what? I'll always be picking you up when you're down. Just turn around. So it's it's not a guy to a girl. It's not. A, it's it's very. No, it's best it's friends. Best friends. You yeah. know. And so that's what we that's what we tailored the lyrics for. And so we did a one minute little demo in in Michael's tiny little back house that we you know he was we were living in at the time, and. Uh, we, I drove it over on, on Monday morning. I went and met with Dan and he, you know, we're sitting there and I go, Dan, I need to get a, a, a CD player. So we go to the prop house, we grab a CD player, we sit down in this little room and I go, okay, I'm going to play this song for you. And Dan goes, oh, wait, 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 don't play the song for me. Let me take it and listen to it without you. And I go, come on, man. I, I, I worked all weekend on this. I'm so <laughs> excited to hear, to hear your response. Like, let me just play it right now. I'm like, come on, I'm Jones, and man, let me play it for you right now. He goes, oh, man, I just, he's like, man, I used to date this girl, and she played the violin, and she always wanted to play the violin in front of me, and I didn't know what to do. Do I tap my foot? Do I snap my <laughs> fingers? Do I bop my head? He's like, I just don't know how to, like, <laughs> let, me, let me listen to it and then come back to you and, and tell you what I think. I said, Dan, we've been working together for how many years now? How many times have you told me what I'm doing is bad or to change this or do that? I go, come on, man. I, you can take I, I want your constructive criticism. If anything, I just want you to tell me what you think. He's like, all right. So I press play, and it's only a minute version. It was verse and chorus. The verse played and the chorus played, and he stands up, grabs the boom box, unplugs it, walks out of the room, and go, starts, and I'm like, he listens to it on his own. I go, where? no, no, no. He listens to the whole song. Okay. And I go, where is he going? So I start following him. Oh, he we, he was working on uh, What I Like About You okay. at the time. So Got he was it. working on Amanda's show over at Fox. And we're at the, we're at the WB uh, uh, lot and, and, and at the studios there. And he walks out of the office onto the stage and starts going to everyone plug and goes and plugs the, the CD player in <laughs> so and goes to everyone and goes, hey, guys. Listen to the theme song to my new show and presses play and plays for everyone on the stage. Oh, that's cool. That's and awesome. I'm standing there going, well, I guess I got the part. That's nice. And so, and he, he, he plays it for everyone on the stage. Everyone, you know, is like, oh, that's great. It sounds great. And then he unplugs it, walks back to me. He goes, all right, now I just got to convince Nickelodeon, but that's our theme song. That's there amazing. Go. I go, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a two minute meeting, a two minute meeting, and I was like, okay, okay, cool. cool. And he's like, and I guess you're and, and you're a guitar player. And we're gonna use the music for the show. Like that's okay, cool. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> See you later. Still cashing checks from that song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you know those those eight cent checks come in okay. every once, every once in a while. Keep them rolling. Yeah, you know. It was so funny. Drake actually, the rapper, put yes. out one of those. Yeah. It, did you see his Degrassi. Instagram? His eight cent. He's like, those Degrassi checks still coming in. I'm like, I feel you, brother. I feel you. I'm like, man, the postage cost well, more. Yeah, right. Why did you send it? Yeah. Well, listen to Honest. It is Drake Bell's new EP that will be a pure profit for you, sir. Yeah. EP. It's everywhere. Stream it. Honest. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, and absolutely. Thank you. This was fun. This was very relaxed. Yeah. I we kind try. of felt like. F forgot I was on the radio. <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Drake Bell, everybody. Woo! All right. All right.